Hey everybody, Monkey Wrench Mike. We are back with another video on my 1969 280 SE. And yes, we have up lighting here to make me look so much younger. It's not working, is it? Anyway, today's video, as we try to get this old girl back on the road, includes installing two bushings on our shift lever rod, which doesn't sound like much, but it is a real pain in the you know what. We're also gonna fix the uh, gear lever on the transmission so the car doesn't try to move when you are starting it. And we're just gonna fix lots and lots of other parts. So without further ado, let's get dirty. You really have to be kidding me, right? See all the little pistons? Right, it looks like snow. <laughs> I'm flooring a V12 engine. You thought this was gonna be perfect, right? Why can't I like fall in love with a Lexus? Monkey. Wrench. Wrench. Mike. Mike. Yay! I'm Nothing. in the car. Tell you what, this is not going to be fun. I can tell you already. Putting these little things on, for example, a 560 SEL or SEC isn't fun. There's a special tool by my good friend here, Mercedes Source, that uh, certainly helps with the process. This is different, so the way this goes on is very, very different. There's nothing actually holding it but the bushing itself. We will get those two things installed right here on my linkage, and then we're going to adjust the transmission so that it doesn't try to run away when I give her a start. Let me show you. All right, we have the old bushings, the old tire as a backdrop, and all kinds of pliers, and even some PB blaster because we're going to need all of this. I have loosened this, which is a real bear. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. My plan is to, as we go along, kind of clean everything up because nothing's too good for baby. <laughs> or should I say nothing's too good for Janice. So this is how you adjust it. Okay, you put the uh, gear selector in the car into neutral, the uh, gear selector on the transmission into neutral, connect it, make sure there's not too much play, and then lock it down like this but we've got to get this out. This is actually the wrong one. So what came in the car is incorrect and I got to figure out how I'm going to get it out, which is going to be so much fun. So we'll try to get this thing out. Here we go. Here we go. Yep, yep, yep. Oh no, it almost, almost. Yeah, almost not. Ah! Well, this is going to be fun. So we'll be back when we get it out. This is, yeah, this is a hot mess. Here we go. Come on, there it is. Okay, can you see the difference? Yep, right there. Okay, so this one has a little bitty part of a lip on this side, which it sets right inside here. That's what holds this in. Then there's a little bitty lip on the inside that holds the ball in. Okay, so what we need to do is kind of lube these things up, thus the white lithium grease, and then we press them in using pliers. Yay, this this gonna be something. Unfortunately, here is where the microphone quit working. So let me kind of walk you through what happened. That's what's supposed to happen right there. All of the forums tell you to put the bushing on the ball socket and then squeeze the linkage itself onto that. Well, I tried and tried and tried. I even went out and bought a new C-clamp to try to do this. They also tell you to lubricate the bushing with some Dawn or any kind of uh, dishwashing soap. So we did that. We gave it a try. Here I am kind of putting the dishwashing soap on the shift bushing, and then I'm going to try to squeeze it on with the brand new C-clamp that I got. This thing was amazing. It has a big, thick lever that you can use to really get torque to squeeze whatever you want together, but it didn't work. This thing was impossible to get on. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't get it to work. So I got a socket out and I was gonna use that to get over the part of the ball joint that was sticking out of the shift lever itself. Nope, the bushing kept coming out the back. No matter what I tried, no matter what tool I used, I could not get that thing on. So then I had a bright idea. Why don't we do what everybody tells you not to do? We put the bushing onto the shift lever first and then I was going to squeeze the ball socket into that using some pliers. Guess what? It worked. It worked great. The only problem I had though was when I tried to remove the shift bushing from the ball socket so I could put it in the linkage, I jabbed a screwdriver way down inside the palm of my hand and boy, was that painful. 
Well, we have the top piece installed. I had to take the uh, shifter out like you saw. Then I stabbed myself with the uh, screwdriver. And then I fought for this for a couple hours. And then I went about it a completely different way. And yay. So I got it all back together. To put that little piece in, you have to take off the center console. There's a plastic piece right under here you take off. You take off the carpet to access four bolts that hold that on. So we did that. Now let me show you what's going on underneath. And hopefully, hopefully we'll get this thing in there. All right, well this is when you wish you had a lift. Well, I wish that a lot. I really do. So anyway, let me get the camera there. There it is, and this is in neutral. So what I have to do is screw this in to the top half and make sure I can insert this. Okay, because it's much easier if the bushing is already on that piece. So let me just kind of insert, tell me you're gonna let me do this. Okay, here we go. Oh, this is fun. This rod is really bent, so I don't know the history. I do not know. But, wow. This is like super bent. Oh, that's got to, I got it. Well, can I go more? Yep, I can do one more. That looks like it's going to be about it, right? Or one more. Like that. That's perfect. Okay, now this is on the wrong side. Okay, so let's go back to park, and then we'll go one, two, one. That's too far. That's it. One. Oh, come on. <gasps> okay, so park, reverse, neutral. Right? Wouldn't you think so? Why is this thing in the way? I don't like how that's there. But that's got to be it. One, two. So now I feel like I have to go out more. Let me make sure I'm in park. Hold on, or neutral. <sighs> nope. Nope, she's not in neutral, that's why. She's in four, that's neutral. Neutral, stay there. Okay. Okay, so that's neutral. Now I'm too far. That's gonna have to be it. Lock this down. Where's my lube? Where's my dish soap? Yep, that's right. Okay, now we squeeze. Now it's not. Oh my gosh. Here we go.
Oh, come on, you're almost there. You're almost there. Oh, gee, many Christmas. There. Is that it? That is it. She is in neutral, ouch, and let's see if the wheel will move. If so, I think we've had a successful mission. Look at that. Yes, yes, yes. Good job. All right, so pat yourself on the back, Mike. All right, this is just crazy talk. This is absolutely crazy. Guess what I did? Yeah, I hooked the gas back up and I connected the original fuel pump. See that right there? Yeah, that's the original fuel pump and I rebuilt it probably six or seven months ago. That's just the return line. Okay, that's where gas that hasn't been used is coming out. But the original fuel pump is running the car. Can you believe that? Can you believe it? The original, Mike did something else right. <gasps> yeah. Original fuel pump. Okay, so let's put on some hoses right here. Maybe we'll put some uh, antifreeze in this thing. I do need some distilled water, but this, oh, 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 this is a good thing. This is a real good thing. It's now dark. I've had to run to the parts store. Let me activate my fuel system right here and let me show you what we have done. Okay, so we've replaced the little hoses, okay, that go from here to here, here to here, heater core up into here. The only thing, and, and this part right here that goes into the uh, mechanical fuel injection unit. The only thing that I'm really worried about is there's a connection right here. And I, I don't even know if you guys can see it, but it's right there, see? And it's a 38 millimeter um, nut that holds this, that it goes into the engine block. And it's it was kind of rusted and everything, and I've tightened it. Um, and I'm just kind of worried that that might be problematic. Um, we filled it with water because I don't want to waste a whole bunch of antifreeze if I have huge leaks. So we're going to give it power here, cap off full of water. Well, it was a couple seconds ago. We're going to give her a start and we're going to see if we have any major leaks. All right. Once again, we're running off of the original. Yes, Lola, the original fuel pump that Mike rebuilt months and months and months ago. Okay, here we go. Hopefully it's gonna work. Here we go. Can you hear it? Yep. Oh, I thought it was gonna start immediately. Ha-ha! <laughs> Come on. Dead gummit, Mike is screwing up really big time. Okay, come on. Here we go. This is good. There's no gas tank. I need to figure out where my temperature sensor is on the engine. Woo, we're brewing something. Oh, shoot. Okay, well, we got an issue right here, all the automatic. <laughs> oh no! Who'd have thought? Okay, we need to. Oh my goodness. Well, it's a good thing. It's a good thing that we are. Uh... Wow. Okay. Let's turn it off real quick. I didn't even know that. Wow. So the water goes everywhere in this engine. I need to read more. I really do because that goes from here all the way around here, 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 and down to here. And this, I don't like how that actually fits on there. This is vacuum. This is water. So it goes here. And then where does it go? I don't, I don't know. What the heck is going on? Oh, it goes here, 
here, here, around, down here, down here, and disappears in there. Okay, so right around your throttle body, there's water floating everywhere. Well, that's great. That's interesting. Okay, let me let me get a clamp. We'll be back. Then we're back with a shiny new clamp. Eventually, I'm gonna get all these clamps and everything looking beautiful, detail the engine. I've already cleaned the valve cover, but everything else, if everything goes as smoothly as uh, things are now, then I will treat this to a nice little engine detail and she'll be looking great. Now let's try it. See if we're shooting water anywhere. We shouldn't be. Okay, here we go. Yes, sir, first start. First start, Tommy. We're not leaking water. No leak, no leak, no leak, no leak. All kinds of stuff going through there. I hope it's not a head gasket issue. I don't see water coming out anywhere, do you? Okay, well, what do you guys think? That's a lot of stuff coming through there. I hope it's not a head gasket. Oh my goodness gracious. Anyway, we'll just kind of see. We'll monitor the situation. Well, what do you think? I'm in love. I really am. I love her, I love her, I love her, I love her. I hope she's a good car for me. Um, only thing right here. So bizarre. Let me know what you think in the comments. We still have to work on the uh, brakes. That is coming up next. And if we get the brakes working, we're gonna put her on the ground and we're gonna take her for a spin. I gotta check the transmission fluid. I'm not gonna change that yet until I'm sure that it will drive and go on its own accord. So thank you for watching, folks. This has been such a fun transformation with this 1969 Mercedes. I'm having a lot of fun. Hope you're having a lot of fun. And we'll come back with another video very, very soon. All right? She's still smoking. Yay.